sir. How are you? How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm good. I hope you're staying dry. Trying. <laughs> it's not the London Film Festival without rain. I was going to say, it's only appropriate that we have just a little bit of rain on the opening night of London. So, so how challenging was it bringing this film to the big screen? Well, it's a, sorry, it's a good question. Um, you know, this was a screenplay that I tried to option three years ago when Graham Moore first wrote it. And uh, it initially went to the studios, uh, as good material often does. Uh, but as good material often also does, uh, studios don't always want to make, you know, what they perceive to be smaller, character-driven, dramatic stories, um, unless they come together in a certain way. Um, but I read the screenplay both at that time and then a year later when it became available. And the fact that nobody knew the story of Alan Turing uh, the fact that you had such an important character, such an important man, uh, that throughout the world was so incredibly underappreciated, and yet the story was being told in a relatively multifaceted, entertaining, informative way, uh, felt to me like a story that needed to get out there. Um, so we optioned it two years ago, and I agreed based solely on the screenplay to greenlight the film, and we would figure out the director, the cast, but we would shoot it in the UK. We knew that because it was very important as an American writer and American producers to make sure that this film was anchored where it should be. And we set about making it. And I think it was one of those rare situations where people understand that it's not about uh, what famous person gets involved. It's about the story of Alan Turing being told and told properly. And the people who are most passionate about it were going to raise their hands and we were going to create something that felt outside the norm of a standard biopic um, that, did, that did Turing and his genius justice. It is an incredible story. Um, one of the things that uh, highlights in the, the, the film highlights is um, Turing's homosexuality, which is acknowledged but never really too focused on. Was that always the plan, or was homosexuality ever uh, a more important or more large part of the story? Sure. Um, you know, I think that there was certainly a, a focus on highlighting the relationship with Christopher um, and that young Alan Turing had with Christopher Morecambe uh, at the Sherburn School, which, you know, as you read literature and read Alan's writings, is his definitive and pretty much only long-term relationship. Uh, and I think we didn't want to fabricate other relationships for the sake of highlighting homosexual behavior because to us it was less about the behavior than it was about um, the man and that was clearly a, a driving driving part of his life and an influence and a tragedy that had happened at an early age um, you know we certainly talked of you know should should we see more more intimacy in the 1950s should we see more intimacy uh, at Bletchley but there really was no intimacy at Bletchley um, you know Turing described it as a sexual desert and in the 1950s you know we were really trying to use that as a bookend story where the emotion the pain the suffering and the injustice is really something that started at a very early age and he carried with him his entire life so no it wasn't really something that we felt you know like we were making a sacrifice on we were just trying to do something different than what a standard biopic with a gay protagonist would do and uh, hopefully that resonates well thanks for talking to us and enjoy your premiere thank you